Hello guys and welcome to episode 34 of my Empire Total War campaign playing as Great Britain on very hard difficulty. Today we are going to be continuing um, with this turn. We've got 6,592 cash to spend. We've got to find places to spend that. So, over at Amsterdam and Brussels. Um, I'm very tempted to send a few troops over to Paris because we do see that the Savoy is on the way with a small amount of, uh, of forces but enough probably to take Paris if I leave it undefended. So I think what I'm going to do here is not only recruit into Paris itself with maybe just one unit but I'm also going to bring a unit out of Brussels and head them into Paris as well. So that's the first thing I'm going to do just to make sure that that is uh, more safe. Then we're going to have a look at our fleets. So first of all, I should probably take an eye and uh, look at this fleet in Portsmouth. Um, we have that new ship that's being built there and we can jump our rake onto that. We've been waiting for that for a while. And I think I'm going to use this ship to take out this French Navy um, since it has been stopping our other ships here from doing what they need to so let's maybe come in here and uh, if I can I may as well join that fleet and then we can actually attack the French so yeah now we're at war with them we can finally dislodge these <laughs> ships and and save them from their impending doom it's a shame really because I'm sure uh, Pippin Inglis here and uh, Lance Carnot became best friends in the time that we were at peace, but uh, now it's time to go to war again, so off we go into the water. Now I'm probably not going to take too long doing this, just because I believe we have another naval battle lined up with the French in the Caribbean, so this will be pretty quick. I'm going to keep my 5th freight and Indiaman out of the way, and then we're just going to have uh, my 4th rate go ahead and deal with their ships. So off we go. Nice and close already. Speed things up. Beautiful. It shouldn't take us long to destroy a brig and a sloop. We've got a lot of guns. I love the name of this, Triton. Very, very cool. Alright, let's uh, maybe turn into them so we can cut across them maybe. Get those guns on target. There we go. Beautiful. As soon as they are in range, we will open fire. Brand new ship out of Portsmouth. Going to be firing away there. Absolutely demolished the guns on that brig. Wow. Crazy. They managed to fire back at us with some firepower there, but uh, we've destroyed a solid nine of those guns. Keep up the speed with the sails here. Trouble is, we're now going against the wind, which is awkward. That brig managing to load faster than my men, at least. All good. Let's just speed things up. Allow that engagement to continue. No, not long now, I don't think until that's going to be completely broken. Oh, they actually just sunk. <laughs> well, there's that, I guess. Don't know where that sloop's going. Maybe he's doing a runner. Oh, that was a broadside. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> uh, crazy. Okay, so nice and quick there. <laughs> that was a spectacular finish. Um, that's going to free up our navy. Beautiful. Ready. And uh, we can now jump into port there. I can actually get my agent off the ships and we'll head him towards Munich here where we want to spot um, the rest of the troops out of the French. All right, in the meantime, time to fix these chaps up. That's fantastic. We can get that Indiaman down to the Ivory Coast eventually. Let's now jump over to the Americas where I remember us having a pretty decent battle on our hands with our huge fleet of fourth rates and galleons versus the French Navy here, which is full of damaged sloops. I would like to capture their galleons. So let's go ahead and fight this on the seas. Okay, so definitely fighting this out. The auto resolve, I don't think, is really representative of the uh, power on other sides here, <laughs> especially considering our ships here are extremely strong. Let's jump in and fight this on the bottom. So we're probably just going to keep like a standard formation, I think, and just go at them with our big guns. Hopefully make those galleons surrender or capture them. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, um, let's uh, actually just group these. Let me just stop everyone. Or we'll group. Not quite sure about what's going on here. But, uh, oh well. Made it a bit dodgy, I think. <laughs> Possibly. And I'm a little bit worried about how we're going to engage. It seems as though this ship is getting the ahead of the rest. I may have to micromanage these. I could get quite awkward. Just gonna try and keep my guns on target where I can. A race built galleons getting ahead of their ships actually. Not gonna stop my fifth rate from firing though. I barely did anything. Surprised this fourth rate hasn't opened up, honestly. I would sort of try and cut into them if I could, but because the wind wouldn't be in our favour, it seems like a pretty bad idea. Oh, that sloop is wrecked. I've only got one gun left. Nice broadside there, I'm just going to smash that race-built galleon. It seems as though my flagship actually will be taking the brunt of the fire from all of these ships. I'm very tempted to have these ships maybe do something different to the rest. The galleons are, are pretty strong for going into the wind, I think. They're pretty fast vessels, so we'll try and do that. Just want to try and cut off these galleons if I can. That race build galleon is currently routing. 
it's it sunk. Wow, okay. Alright, let's turn back in a bit here. I want to try and take on these galleons if I can. The sloops aren't really an issue. Our ships are going to completely outmatch their sloops. And we've already sunk, what, three ships? Oh, really nice volley there. Smashed that galleon. Perfect. Just need a couple more volleys, probably end up making them surrender. Oh wow, We've got a kill on there against that sloop. Really strong hits there. They barely have any guns left. Oh, that's another sloop gone. <laughs> Look at them all just falling apart. It's crazy. Just gonna hope these galleons do the job. firepower on these galleons is just insane. I don't know why it just seems so much more than the 5th rates and the 4th rates. Because it really is a lot more. And oh, those guys are routing. I really want them to surrender ideally. Because then I can capture them. What I might do is get these guys to go and try and board. I think that's pretty much the battle won, isn't it? I mean, even if I only capture one, that's fine, I think. I'm going to continue for now. Just to see if I can get my hands on this one. Oh, they surrendered. Okay, good. That's fine. Go chase down this other one. Put on to chain shot. Because then as we're chasing, we will be able to fire into their sails. Assuming we catch up. Which I don't think we will, because... Obviously, we're going the same speed, and they still have all their sails intact, but uh, it would be nice to catch it if we can. Mm, not sure we're going to. Let's quit the battle there for a heroic victory. And looks like we have our hands on another galleon. So prize money is 1,298, but I think I'm going to hold on to the, actually probably both of these, the Indiaman and the galleon. We'll add those to our fleet and that'll do nicely. One of the galleons got away. Aye, aye, sir. Okay, so we best go to port somewhere. I think we might head towards Nassau. And what I'm going to do is actually start recruiting some militia here that I can use to push the pirates out of the port once again. And then we can have our fleet crush them and uh, take control of that galleon. And then how we can fix up there as well. We've got 3,300 left to spend. Um, let's jump into our lists. See what we have to do. So at Amsterdam, I think next turn we replenish, don't we? So that's what we're waiting for. So we'll just leave them there. At Paris, we're absolutely fine. Um, at Königsberg, I feel like we should 
probably get some more troops here. Since I do want to kill off Kurland eventually. So let's go for another line infantry. And I'm also going to look at getting myself a new general. Let's go ahead and do that. Shakily Burgess. Or Burgess. Yeah. Okay, cool. That'll have to do. That's going to free up these pikemen as well. So when we fully replenish them, they can be pure melee forces rather than me having to hold them back because they have command in them. Um, Michael McDowell here we will end up getting rid of if we don't need him anymore but I think at the moment just sort of dealing with the public order quite nicely up in Moose Factory we're waiting for this building to finish then we're likely going to be able to move out those troops so they are staying where they are at uh, Caracas we already moved out Christian Hogarth didn't we and uh, Kevin McDowell, he's continuing back towards Boston, so let's get that done. And at Madrid, we are still under siege. So eventually we're going to have to push out, but for now we're fine. Dennis York is staying in Brussels. Okay, back to our fleets. I feel like Edward Russell here should probably stay in the Americas, since we're only at war really with the French and the Spanish would destroy that fleet so yeah I think what we're going to do is occupy the French port up here try and stop the French from making any more fleets I can also look into taking this province I think it might be a nice idea maybe we could do that with some of the forces of Kevin McDowell. Or we could just recruit some new forces up here at uh, Fort Nashwag. Like a couple of Hessian line infantry or something. And then just jump them onto boats to go and take that because it's pretty undefended. There's no walls there as well, which is nice. It's quite simply just two firelock arm citizenry defending that. In terms of our agents, well, have a look what uh, Colonel Francis Charteris finds. Is my shield. So Yankton, the army is actually pretty small. That's interesting because I might, after I take York Factory, be able to just wander down into the Plains Nation territory and just take that. Alright, let's uh, carry on. Protestant missionary is going to carry on towards York Factory. And that's everything done. Let's have a quick check of our technology. I'm not entirely sure what we're working on here. So we have naval architecture advances underway at Orléans. And we've got turns at Utrecht, which is going to increase the bonus town wealth from textile industry. And then we have the condensed marching I think this is which is going to enable the recruitment of Royal Welsh Fusiliers awesome also gives us in, um, improved campaign map movement speed which is nice brilliant so that is more or less everything done right we have 1000 left to spend is there any buildings that I've missed I'm not sure there is I could maybe start rebuilding stuff around Königsberg, but probably not a good idea until we've dealt with uh, Kurland. What about over in the Americas? Because we do have new towns popping up all the time. Not sure, honestly. Might be worth just saving the cash, or we could maybe start spending it on these troops. But then if we're going to recruit, we may as well do it at Boston, right? Because that will only take one turn. Now it's going to take, I think, two turns for this fleet to get down to Boston. So... 
I think I can wait till next turn to recruit those. I'm just going to hold on to the cash. Because we're getting slightly less income this turn anyway. Alright. That's everything done then. Let's move on to the next turn. France not looking particularly threatening. I was kind of expecting them there to come at me with all of those armies, but it seems they held back just coming at me with one of them. Poland Lithuania still building up near Königsberg. That's not looking very fun. Oh my, that's a lot of forces. Imagine if we actually have to defend against that. I'm going to regret taking Königsberg for this entire campaign. <laughs> Oh well, once we get our economy sorted, it's already kind of sorted, but once we get it fully sorted, um, then things will definitely look a lot better towards our wars in Europe at least. 13 colonies has a lot of work to do against Cherokee. It'd be good if we could get the settlements we need for the mission before the 13 colonies does. Oh, Savoy is going to run up here and attack. Okay, so this is kind of what I expected to happen, which is why I shifted over one of the line infantry. But they're not really going to be able to break through very easily, since obviously um, there's a lot of cav. Uh, we can kill off that line infantry nice and easy, and uh, that's going to be pretty much job done. Um, let's go ahead and fight this on the battle map. I'm not sure if there's uh, too many breaches, but even if there are, we can we can create sort of the usual firing sort of circles that just mow them down as they come through the breach, even with firelock arm citizenry. It's just we won't have to fire by rank. Well, we might. It depends. If there is breaches and they're coming in from the breach directions, then I'll just have my regiment of foot on the ground. And it looks like that's going to be the case. So, yeah, just a matter of lining up like so. Or maybe we should do it like so. And then have Phylox Arm Citizenry take the brunt. That'd be a better idea. We can have some in the buildings. I think we're going to have a couple here. And a couple here. Okay, what do we have left? Because there is one more breach. We got these forces, haven't we? Hopefully that'll be good enough. <laughs> Let's set in the deployment. They're coming from this direction. We'll speed it up. We captured the buildings. Uh, these line infantry are heading over to the left side. Okay, it might be tempting to sort of switch some of these out. Um, like this. Because they're probably going to try and put grapples up on this wall, right? And then they're just going to run back round to the breach. That's generally what happens. Or they'll actually climb. And I'll just be in a really bad position. Nope, they're coming through the breach. As expected. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of damage with our Phylok Arm Citizenry, but not too much. It's really going to be up to our line infantry here to do the job, but currently not doing particularly well. Okay. 
So Savoy finally engaging with British troops after all this time. Probably not going to end well for them, honestly. They do have bayonets. That's something. But our men holding out very well indeed. Still got 150 men. They're down to 90. I think often just the unit on defense always has the advantage in these engagements. I, don't know, I think I'm shooting myself in the back from these buildings, but oh well. Those guys are just like gonna beat them to death. I feel like they are. It's actually in a pretty good position there to just kill off a lot of them as they run away. Wow. What a beat down that was. Okay, time to speed things up. Are they gonna come at me with those horsemen? I feel like I could maybe move my line infantry out here. The thing is, I don't want to obviously push out because that would give them an advantage with those cav, but at the same time, looks like we're going to have to. So let's just bring out the firelock arms citizenry. I'll have my general behind and we'll just speed things up. We're going to take shots from those cannons, but we have so many men here that we should be able to wreck the infantry quite easily. One thing I am a little bit worried about is they'll probably try and target my general. The AI loves a general snipe. Right, let's just run these guys into position. Then we can start advancing on these guns. I might split them in two, honestly. Right, let's just go at it. We'll just sprint. Definitely focusing my line infantry. Okay, they're coming in hot. I think. engage them here. I'm going to have some of these dudes just charge down the, gu the main guns there. These guys can come back over. We managed to almost get in our square, which is good. But uh, better than that, we've charged into the back of them with all of these uh, Firelock Arm Citizenry, so that's good. Let's just try and get shots into their general if we can. It's really cheeky, but it's worth doing. Alright, one of my Firelock Arm Citizenry is suffering a little bit there, but uh, done quite a lot of damage. Those cannon shots are actually pretty much in our favour. Alright, so we engage their cannons.
go try and shoot as many of those horsemen as we can. Well, let's just get in there with melee onto all of them. I'm surprised my file of comes is really just routing like pretty much instantly. I do want to fire at these guys. I don't really care about the friendly fire on to file off arms system. I just want to kill off this cab. Alright, these file off arms system can come back. That's interesting because usually you can't turn off the melee mode once you put them onto melee mode, but in this case I could. Right, we've actually absolutely wrecked the cab now, which is good. It'd be nice to kill their general as well. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Or not. The battle's just going to end. <laughs> well, victory nonetheless, and uh, that's good stuff. Forces back Savoy. Hopefully, they will think again before coming towards Paris. Cherokee not going to be up to much. Maybe raiding a port there. Pirates hanging about, and of course Spain, or at least the Spanish rebels, As population sabotaging here, different buildings. Okay. So this French army, I'm not sure how strong it is, but we have all our men back up to scratch. Let's have a look at this message here. Longman Publishing. Enterprising Bristolian Thomas Longman, having served an apprenticeship under London bookseller John Osborne has embarked upon an exciting commercial venture after buying out the two bookshops of Mr. William Taylor of Paternoster Row and founding his own Longman Publishing in their place. Mr. Osborne, also his father-in-law, is Longman's partner in the business. It would seem that acquiring the business of Mr. Taylor was a shrewd investment, since they have also acquired the rights to Daniel Defoe's bestseller, Robinson Crusoe, along with the stock and properties. With such firm foundations, the story of Longman Publishing seems set to be a long and successful one. So an enemy raid, that's fine. Uh, works on strike in the Netherlands. I think we're all good. Okay, in the Netherlands, we've actually managed to sort out the public order for the most part, so that's fine. Uh, but I definitely do need to sort of bolster up these armies. So that's what I'm going to do with my cash in this turn. But unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. So yeah, next time we'll just sort of increase the size of the armies in Europe uh, with all of this cash that we have coming in. Uh, we'll look at possibly breaking out of the siege at Madrid because we can't really allow the rebels to back up the Spanish army otherwise things are going to get pretty difficult there. So we'll look into that and I'll also of course look into more naval engagements in the Caribbean to deal with the pirates. That's all for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.